we usually uh, kick these things off, but um, I think it's just about one, so shall we get going? Um, it's a pleasure to have uh, Jim Beiser as our guest uh, this month. Um, I've known Jim for a very long time. He's a good friend. Uh, he started off at NOAA, where he directed the division there. Uh, he moved to ASU in 2003, where he was a senior advisor to President Michael Crow, uh, office just a couple doors down the street from uh, Michael Crow. Uh, worked for him for eight years, set up ASU's uh, Global Institute for Sustainability and the School of Sustainability, and then in 2011 came, came to the U of A. Um, he's a professor of uh, climate adaptation. He's in the School of Natural Resources. And uh, just earlier this year, he was named interim director of the Arizona Institutes for Resilience. Um, this is as important as anything that has happened at Arizona in the natural resources and environmental field in quite a long time. And I am a huge fan of Jim. He, has, he is a man of uncommon common sense. And uh, he is a man who knows how to get things done. So I think um, the U of A was lucky to get him away from ASU in the first place. And we're really lucky to have him uh, taking over as the interim director uh, at this point in time. So uh, to everyone out there, Kirsten Engel and I, who run this uh, uh, Environmental Breakfast Club, we welcome you to this uh, not regularly scheduled meeting. Um, uh, the slots were full for this year, but we wanted to hear from, from Jim because this is a really important subject, I think, for all of you. So, so uh, welcome to the Environmental Breakfast Club, and Jim, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Um, and with that, uh, uh, with that introduction, I either feel old or, uh, or honored that, uh, that you think of me that way. I'm not sure, maybe both. Um, the, uh, and I appreciate very much to be on this, and I apologize, it's probably uh, because of me that uh, people are confused about time and, and day, uh, but uh, thank you for the opportunity. I see Malcolm Hughes there, I haven't seen, uh, how's your Austin Mini Cooper? Um, oh, wait, waiting for the electric one later in the year. Okay. Um, yeah, um, it, so I have uh, some slides and uh, I understand that sometimes people use slides, sometimes they don't, but the intent here is really not to uh, you know, talk at the slides or at you with slides. Uh, what I'm uh, doing uh, with these is, is really trying to make it more uh, where um, images um, sometimes say more than words, and uh, and then sometimes uh, if you if you lay out matrices and graphs, you can see. So uh, with that, I, I'm hoping to leave uh, most of the time uh, for conversation for questions. Um, a, I'm really honored to have been asked to uh, serve as the interim director. I see uh, of this constellation of 11 different uh, separate units, and I'll tell you a little bit about how that came about. Um, and then what we're trying to do, um, the, uh, it, like the rest of you, I had different plans for 2020. Uh, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Um, and uh, um, it just says one participant can share at a time. Okay. I think if you share the screen, it should. I'm doing that right now. So... Is that working? Yes, it is. So, um, okay. Well, uh, uh, what yeah. we're seeing, what we're seeing, Jim, is your in the upper right corner, small, small, rectangular photo, uh, and we're seeing your PowerPoint. And I think when you go to uh, start PowerPoint, it'll go, if not full screen, pretty close. So it should be should be really good. Well, um, can you see my cursor on on this side? Yes, yeah, I sure can. Get over here. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit because if Wait, I the eye test, uh, yeah, yeah, the eye test. Yeah, can you see, can you see all of this? Yeah, I'm going to cheat a little bit because this way I can look over to the left and see what's next, right? Um, right. Uh, okay, well, um, uh, so in the spirit of being brief, uh, now this isn't a sermon. Uh, uh, don't freak out, Jeff. This isn't intended to be a sermon, but I think it's true of pretty much every pr presentation here. What George Byrne says. 
So the um, uh, Arizona, what I'm going to present is just give you a little bit of background timeline, uh, sort of the the, uh, the vision and mission as we en envision it. So uh, what we have as a design uh, and our organization, in some ways, we're actually uh, conceptualizing, designing, building, and flying the airplane at the same time and doing it um, eh, all via Zoom, as you can imagine. Eh, and uh, then I'll uh, lay out the themes and we'll talk a little bit about that, of what we are uh, covering. Um, and uh, eh, I, don't, I don't intend, I actually took that, uh, that slide of sources of funds, I can put it back in. Uh, I forgot to change my, <laughs> this was what I intended to do yesterday, but I don't wanna uh, spend that much time on the, on the uh, presentation. And then, and then really uh, have a discussion and talk about collaborative opportunities. And I think that that's uh, critically important. Um, before I go to the next slide, I'm going to uh, just just for the purpose of this presentation and in the conversation, when we talk about resilience, because uh, people say, well, what do you mean by that? Um, 15 years ago, when we were talking about sustainability, people say, well, what do you mean by that? Um, and it's important to know. Um, in, it, to me, uh, resilience is kind of like one over X times fragility. Um, it, it's robustness. Uh, it is uh, systems and uh, circumstances that can withstand shocks. Uh, a, and boy, I'll tell you, uh, the shock we've experienced in the last six to eight months showed us how very fragile our systems are, uh, all of our systems. I, okay, so uh, moving on. Um, in June 2019, Betsy Cantwell, Senior Vice President for Research, uh, moved uh, down uh, from uh, the university, uh, from Arizona State University. She'd been there for five years and then had, uh, pr prior to that, had had a career in the national labs. Uh, while she and I did not overlap up there, um, when she first got there, Michael Crow called me up and said, I got, uh, you need to meet this person that we just hired. And so I have known her for now six years, but I had known her since she was up there and we'd spent some time together working on some various, various things. So she called me uh, and, uh, oh, I don't know, May or June and said, uh, Jim, I'm thinking about uh, uh, taking a job down there. Uh, would you mine being my ASU to U of A transition whisperer. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I said, sure. Um, so we talked quite a bit. Um, come uh, October, um, uh, and this is at, if you have all, if anyone's been to Laverna's Cafe, uh, you know what that's all about. It's a place over near the university. It's open at 5.30. So we were there at 5.30 one morning. She said, Jim, what I really need to understand is I've been looking at all these institutes that report directly to me and I need to understand who, who the hell designed this. Um, and I said, well, here's your lesson, uh, ASU versus U of A. It, no one designed it. It, uh, it was created uh, organically. It's uh, grassroots, bottom up. People uh, have ideas, they form centers and then, uh, and, and that's totally okay. We love it that way, but it is, uh, prudent from time to time, perhaps it once every 10 years to ask the question, is this designed properly? So that started the conversation about what might be a, uh, a structural change uh, that, uh, that was really focused around a resilience and that would advance the university uh, and what we do and celebrate with the university and our faculty and our students and what we do in this area. So I'll come back to that in a little bit when I talk about um, sort of the vision, but that was June, then, then came uh, November. Um, it was in any detail, um, I thought I had very cleverly uh, positioned someone to be the interim director of this institute, and uh, he uh, was more clever than I, so he um, went on sabbatical. Um, and to mix two metaphors, when the music stopped, I got caught holding the bag, uh, and so and uh, so I was asked, and uh, I'm very happy to be doing this. I see my main job really is to pre uh, is to make this such a cool. Uh, organization that uh, that anyone that we'd like to have run it permanently would say yes. Uh, and that's what I'm uh, working on. The very first thing she did, uh, Betsy, was to form a design committee. She asked me to chair. There were nine of us uh, um, a, and uh, that uh, were on the committee uh, from the law school. Mark Miller uh, joined the committee. And then uh, I won't go through all of that, but we, we really picked people that could um, 
the head uh, the university as a unit that they want to succeed. As and uh, you can imagine that uh, a lot of a lot of folks are really focused on their own program, their own department, their own college. Uh, we needed people that that said, yeah, we're we want the university to succeed. So a much broader perspective, and it ranged from a dean uh, to an assistant professor um, and everything in between. We, our starting point uh, was great because we had four documents that have been produced over a period of three years, a landscape review, an internal uh, Institute of the Environment review, an external review. We had uh, Raina Mayer had got, done eight uh, design charrettes. So we had a lot of material to start with, but we needed to get to the next step. And so that's what we did. We had from... Uh, a December uh, until March 1, we presented uh, the, uh, the, uh, our design report. I'm happy to share that with anyone that would like it. Um, and uh, to Betsy, and then on April 10th, she uh, uh, came back with her decision memo. We had laid out um, a, a th sort of three phases uh, for implementation of the design. Our first phase was years one and two, relying heavily on strategic investment funds, years three to five, uh, building off of the, the uh, returns on those investments, and then five to 10, really fleshing out uh, into maturity. And uh, it, well, uh, that was March. And then, uh, and then you know what happened. So we ended up with what I've called a phase zero, which um, it, that could be in time, that could be in dollars. Uh, and it, so we really needed to focus on things that we could do that weren't gonna cost uh, new dollars at the early stage. Um, and that's what we've been, I'll, I'll lay that out a little bit for you. Uh, and here we are in October. So this has uh, been a, a little bit of the timeline. Um, so um, our vision, um, and, I, and I just started mentioning that a minute ago, but our vision, um, that environment, and this is you know writ large, not just resilience or sustainability, but environment, um, it will permeate the university's education, research, and operations. And we really want to differentiate from other universities in that we are truly solution focused. And and in fact, I'll talk a little bit about a roadmap to resilience, a reminder that and that it's partly the trajectory, but it's also keeping in mind that we have a a destination. The destiny we don't stop until we've made sure that the solutions options, you know, scientifically based, research-based solution options, they could be everything uh, from, from policy, social science, behavioral, all the way into sort of technologies. And, and these options towards resilience um, uh, are being either implemented or strongly considered for implementation outside of the university. Um, and so that's uh, our sense of responsibility. It's not like handing off and look here, a bunch of smart people came up with a bunch of theoretical stuff and it's up to you all to, to make it work. So that, and then the other is that we are the go-to place. Um, I'm, I'm uh, imagining a day when uh, someone up in Linden, Washington, where I went to high school, a uh, little farming uh, a community um, a, where less than 50% of the graduate, my graduating class went on to college, that the kids, uh, and but you know, recently they've been marching or last year they were marching on Fridays because of the climate crisis. And I'd like, we'd like to just get those kids to, to say, I wanna be part of the solution and I sure hope I can get into the University of Arizona. And so it's partly about preparing that, but all the way into the research and, solu and, uh, and, and links with partners for solutions. Um, I mentioned the roadmap. That is uh, really uh, a understanding that the, that the, the, uh, um, the, uh, the journey is, uh, is very important and as is the destination to keep in mind that we have uh, as, a, as a, the desired destination uh, to be really ready for the transformation to a robust, low carbon, environmentally sustainable, and socially just world. Um, I don't wanna get too caught up in that because as you can imagine, uh, these are the kinds of things that, uh, that end up being wordsmith to death. So we'll come back <laughs> if someone has any questions about that. Really wanted to talk to you sort of the design and the organization. Hopefully you can see that. Um, what I could do in real time is maybe this, make, make it a little bit bigger. Um, and so I, again, don't want to go into too much of this, but just to give you a sense, I mentioned that it was, it's a constellation of uh, about uh, 
a, of 11 different uh, units that have either existed as part of the Institute of the Environment or separate from that. And I will talk about those. The others uh, in blue outside of that um, are uh, entities that play a significant role because the air is not about building sort of everything happening inside of the Institute. It's really in service of the rest of the university. And I'll talk in a bit about how we're actually uh, actualizing that. Um, to go through some of these acronyms, so Southwest Climate Adaptation and Science Center, it's a, uh, this one right here, funded uh, by the Department of Interior, UC3, the University Climate Change Coalition of 22 R1 universities uh, that have agreed that because of our status and size and uh, capacity, we have an increased re uh, responsibility to advance uh, towards a low to no carbon future. And uh, we, the president signed up on that, to that, and Bobby Robbins signed into it, uh, where uh, Kathy Jacobs um, is the one that's leading that effort. And we can talk more about the, in, uh, the Institute for Energy Solutions, which, which is, uh, so uh, ha had been part of uh, IE and uh, the Institute of the Environment. Uh, sorry, separate from the Institute of the Environment, had we co-located um, and uh, this uh, was uh, is being managed by uh, Neil Armstrong of the group. The West Center for Water Sustainability, this has been in the news a whole lot. And as uh, uh, Ian Pepper, the guy that runs it, um, would say, poop don't lie. He's the one that's doing the um, uh, the research on uh, testing sewage for a coronavirus and being able to actually really help us a, a great deal on the campus, but also giving visibility. Uh, the climate assessments, CLIMAS was part of uh, IE, IRAP, International Research and Applications Program, a, uh, a grants program out of uh, NOAA that I, I uh, ran when I first got here. Um, Carson Scholars Program, the Center for Climate Adaptation, Science and Solutions, Kathy Jacobs run that. Howery Program run by uh, 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 Tony Massaro, um, a, a beautiful program. I'd love to talk lots about that. In fact, all of them. And this Desert Lab at Tumanoc Hill, if y'all haven't been up there, you gotta. Uh, it, it's an amazing, beautiful, iconic place uh, for, that we have here in Tucson. And then the BBCS, uh, you may be less familiar with, Bridging Biodiversity and Conservation Sciences is when an initiative program coming out of the research office uh, that uh, a group of folks that, um, as it says, Bridging Biodiversity and Conservation Sciences, it's come together under our umbrella and, and, and becoming um, sort of uh, more permanent. So that's, uh, and then um, I'm not gonna go through all of the, the others. I think you can see that and you can imagine I missed some, I'm sure, uh, outside of the bubble. Um, I, it's, this is, was not intended to, make, to leave anyone out. Same with the themes. So I, um, I'm not gonna read through all of these. I will tell you um, that the ones in green, environmental law, governments and decision-making, resilience engineering, uh, a applied regional climate modeling, and then an adaptive pandemic solutions. These are all in formation. Uh, we'd love to get input on any of these from anyone on this. Um, a, some of these we are more mature in some ways because we've been doing it longer. Um, some of them are mature and then we just haven't connected with. Um, a, and so, this is where you know this group, and I know uh, that the Breakfast Club isn't just the law school um, uh, by any means, but I would love to have uh, people um, provide their their input, their their uh, their ideas. Again, we're flying this plane at the same time as we're designing it, and so uh, it, there's a lot of design still to be done. Uh, one of the things that uh, that we um, uh, agreed to, um, and I think that this came in great part uh, from Mark Miller, uh, perhaps from uh, a John Chorover, um, uh, this was on the design team, is the idea that we really ought to come together in a matrix managed approach. And again, please don't uh, get fixated on where X's aren't or are, but across the top, are the colleges. So this is just a way to, to sort of articulate or demonstrate that, that uh, the entire university, these are all the colleges here and all of the themes and all the colleges need to be involved. So how do you do that? I mean, how do you get it so that a, a college says it's okay to be spending time, for, especially the younger faculty, to be working on 
on things that are have been identified as the themes uh, a, a for air and what does that look like? What does that mean? Um, a, how do we simultaneously advance our scholarship and our our, our, our uh, teaching um, as the same time as individuals can have to advance their careers? So th uh, that one, this is uh, underway. I've, I've I've talked with the provost. I've talked to Andrew Comrie uh, about this and Betsy, and so we're. Again, ideas on uh, from people way smarter than I that are on this uh, in this group could help us um, a, articulate and define and perhaps even help us implement an, uh, this matrix managed approach. Um, a, because you know, you know, the air sits in the research office. It, I don't. We don't sit in a, an academic unit, and so there's some benefits to that. Um, we get to do all kinds of stuff. In fact, in, in my mind, institutes exist because universities should be doing some things that the colleges and schools alone internally uh, uh, can't do. So these are things that cut across colleges. Um, and so here are some, I'm, I'm about done, uh, some opportunities, collaborative opportunities, um, and that I'd like to talk about. I'm just gonna throw these out uh, that we in AIR, we uh, can, one of the cool things is that we're flexible. I mean, we don't have a lot of constraints. Um, a, uh, we have, fortunately, we have senior leadership, uh, very supportive, um, including in funding. Uh, we did get some strategic investment funds, about one third of what we thought we were going to get. So it was a tiny little startup, um, a, but there is some funding to get some of uh, the things started. In fact, if I were to jump back here uh, a, with adaptive pandemic solutions, um, there's a, a new center being stood up and, and run by a guy named Yanko. Um, I forgot his, sorry, um, Nikolic. Um, a, um, and then uh, the applied regional climate modeling. I just had a conversation uh, with uh, with Chris Castro uh, yesterday about that uh, because we want to be responsive. These are gaps that um, that that we're filling. So and uh, we're filling them using some of those resources. A, so back to that. Um, there, so there's a little bit of funding. Convening. Jim, do you want to take questions as we go along? We we did well, get I'm, one I'm question. Done. Yeah, I'm done now. So what if oh. I? Uh, what, yeah, what if I just stopped and then, uh, um, uh, yeah, I should have probably took, taken a breath. I wanted to put it all out there and then leave, uh, the, you know, 35 minutes to, 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 to hear from you and, and to get, get questions. So um, with that, yeah, um, uh, I'll uh, stop now, right now and uh, leave you uh, with what Yogi Berra has like uh, told us. It would be really nice if you could do it by email rather than by phone so I don't have to try to write it down accurately. Whoops. Do you mind doing that? Okay. Dance, I think you're not on mute. <laughs> All right. Anyway, with that, uh, yes, uh, please. Can uh, any questions, any discussion, any ideas? Uh, and uh, I will um, do this uh, because I don't, not everyone knows me. I don't know at, at uh, Arizona.edu. So here's my, uh, sorry, yoga. That's at law.arizona.edu. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Joellen Russell had a question. Uh, yeah, she uh, asked, the work, so go ahead and use the one you have. Uh, where is the climate physical science component represented? Particularly that, that which would contribute to big proposals and to student research experiences. Or is this not included okay. in AIR? Yeah, it is. Are we now calling it air? We are calling it air, and my ex friend Dave Brashears calls me the air ahead. <laughs> um, uh, so I uh, I went to the screen. Can you still see, you can still see my screen, right? And I highlighted it right up there for Joe Ellen. It is yes. In which center? Where I didn't see on your sort of um, micro dot diagram. Where? Where? Uh, out here. So it's not part of air properly. The air part that's in the middle there, the, the little green dots, not the blue dots. It's not in the green dots. That's correct. So it isn't really part of air. Uh, yes, it is. It's right here. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but the centers, you just said, they're not part of 
to the and, centers that'll be. And I, might, I might be just misunderstanding. I'm so sorry. There is, um, I think I said at the beginning, is um, the, the intent isn't to have a giant umbrella under which the College of Science fits, all climate, all geology, all everything fits under air. That isn't the intent. The intent is to organize around the resilience theme and, and we have uh, within the air, we have programs, we've pulled together programs that have previously existed separately and then we, uh, within AIR, a, our operating principle is to be in service to the university uh, a, 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 in, when it comes to resilience. So uh, uh, Joelle and I completely and totally welcome any uh, thoughts that you might have about how uh, the, your work and, and uh, the physical science can fit in. Um, a, we, uh, um, we have, um, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, a, we met uh, with uh, Chris Castro and uh, the physical sciences certainly represented applied regional climate modeling. Thanks, Jim. Any other questions? Jim, I have a question. So for the, the heads of those units that are those circles within air, how does being part of AIR change what they do? Uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to ask them. Um, so I can tell you so, uh, each one of these, uh, let me just think, because it, it kind of, it's different um, depending. Uh, so for those units that were in the Institute of the Environment, it, it doesn't change. And so I'll tell you the, the four units that weren't part of the Institute of the Environment, the BBCS is a program, the West Center, uh, IES, um, and uh, Tumamoc. Um, it, rather than reporting directly to the VP research, they report to the VP research um, through the director of AIR. And um, it, it's interesting because the value of, of, of something like that, and I'd love to, um, and I work, we work very closely, so of course, because we're all part of this, but um, a, one of the values is that um, we have uh, some budget protection. Um, and so rather than be an independent group of two or three people um, trying to make budget arguments um, as part of AIR, um, there is budget protection. The other thing is that um, we are asking everyone from each one of these units to also dedicate uh, some of their time to, to advancing the cohesion part of air, uh, of air. And so, and that's begun to happen. Um, uh, so uh, that's the other thing uh, when, when, you know, one of the things that I observed at the Institute of the Environment is that uh, there really was very little that defined why we were an institute. In fact, I, 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 to me, it was like you go to the, a mall and you go to the food court and you, have, go, you can choose, you know, have independent um, franchises for whatever you want to eat and then they share tables. And that was kind of the way it was. So what we're working on very hard is to have the relationships between the, the programs uh, help that each program benefit. Uh, we have a question in the chat um, from uh, Jeffrey Femi. Uh, what about the cost benefit for AIR's existence? I'm sorry, um, I was busy on um, un sharing. Um, and I see Julie has a question too, and Malcolm. Um, uh, uh, Jeff, what was that question again? What's the cost benefit analysis for uh, air's existence? Is, is it, that, how do you show the worth of the cost of it? Right. So um, as you can imagine, all of us are, are having to do ROIs, especially for the strategic investments. Um, and that return, return uh, it comes in a lot of different ways. Some that you can actually you know, articulate in numbers. Um, we've done this in the past with IE and, and IES, so we've all had to do this and, uh, annually within the research arm. We have what they call the all funds uh, report. And uh, 
and to demonstrate the ROI in part, and, and you're gonna know that this is gonna be an answer, in part, it's what, what proposals got funded that otherwise would not have been funded if it weren't for the organization. Um, and uh, a big part, uh, you know, one of the things to remember is most of the people within AIR are either partially, uh, either in some fraction, uh, funded by grants. Um, and uh, so other than the administrative support uh, staff there, who is 100% within air, um, uh, most of the people are funded from outside. So the, the actual dollar figure that uh, it costs a university to administer air is really, really quite low. Um, and uh, uh, and the return on that investment um, has been somewhere between uh, five to seven times. Uh, it depends. And some of the, you know, like the Institute for Energy Solutions demonstrates um, it closer to 18 times uh, a return. So that's one. But the other return, um, it, you know, what we've argued is that R isn't always in dollars. Um, it's in a university reputational um, sort of capital and in better experiences for our students and uh, a, a, uh, better solutions that are more integrated uh, towards, in this case, resilience. So that's, uh, Jeff, how I would answer that. Uh, Malcolm, do you want to? Um, you're you're un, you're unmuted already. So uh, yeah, I just undid. So Jim, this is all uh, interesting and fine, and I wish you well with it. Um, but I guess my um, my thought overlaps a little bit with Joe Ellen's question. So there is still as big a job intellectually and reputationally in terms of students and in terms of um, looking after the talents and the capacities we already have within your first bullet point there, within um, the, the, if you like, the planetary studies of planet Earth, which is where we started trying to sort things out in the fall of 86. Uh, yeah, I mean, 86. Uh, and then by 88 with the Committee on Global Change and then in the early 90s, um, ISPI as originally headed up by, by Lisa Gramlich. She is now head of a dean of a college of the environment at a major university. And on the planet Earth side of things, uh, and this is not a criticism of the, res the resilience initiative. I see that as a good addition, but who is taking care of the planetary thinking for planet Earth in terms of its basic understanding, its physiology, if you like, in this general push uh, for the university? I know there was an idea floated a year or two ago that there might be a College of Environmental Science. I know that a group of department heads have lunch together every second Friday, but I don't see, or maybe you do know how, we're going to take care of this other long-standing and uncompleted task. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to punt this, Malcolm, but that's above my pay grade. Um, I was in on the conversations a, uh, a couple of years uh, ago or a year and a half ago um, a, about the um, uh, College of the Environment versus the Institute. And, the, um, and uh, you know, actually, I, I, I got myself into pretty big trouble because I had uh, uh, an opinion that why not have both? Um, why yeah. should it be, uh, uh, you know, sort of mutually exclusive? Um, we do. I am part of that group. It's actually now every week uh, that meets. It's called the Seas Heads. Um, yeah, sure. Right. And uh yeah. And we haven't actually had lunch lately, but uh, we do meet. Um, yeah. And uh, so, and and we talked about this. We've presented that. So just so for the others who aren't aware, uh, Tom Meissner from Science is on there. Barbara Carabas is on there, and then others like uh, John. Well, it was John Kaprowski, now Wim Ben Leon, and uh, uh, John Chorover, um, the Tree Ring Lab, uh, David Frank. So folks like that, and about eight of us. And we do have these conversations, um, but I, um, 
I, I don't know. I got myself into a lot of trouble when I had an opinion last time. So Malcolm, um, I bet you're not trying to set me up, but um, no, it, uh, it's an no I, I think you should be doing what you do. I would say that what you're doing is a great thing to do, but I'm concerned about the other opportunity that we're missing. Yeah, it seems to me, and I, I may be just plain out of date. You know, well, when you get to be as emeritus as me, that's a distinct possibility. <laughs> But it, it just, it bothers me because I've thought that several times uh, we really were, we really were the come to place yeah. in a number of areas. And for some subfields, we absolutely still are, but that we were close to uh, bringing together uh, a coalesce, coalescing mass of capacity and great grad students and so mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And, and, and that we don't seem to be quite getting there. And it seems it's not a high institutional priority anymore. Yeah, perhaps that's what Joe Allen was, was thinking or referring yeah. to. So I, um, and I, I don't have an answer to, um, you know, how, how do we uh, strengthen um, a, that part of the problem? Yeah, absolutely critically important to have uh, strong basic fundamental understanding of the processes on our planet if we think that we're going to uh, be living here um, a, a, and in fact be um, resilient to shocks that either happen with uh, not because of us but most of them because of us um, and then and, you know to get back to sort of how I was defining resilience earlier. Um, I see Mark's on here on his iPhone, Mark Miller, and I wonder, Mark, um, if I'm missing some of the uh, my memory it, going back to the three months that we got together uh, as a design team, whether or not I'm missing some of that conversation. I don't know, Mark, if you if you have anything on that. Uh, no, nothing, um, nothing substantial, Dan. Yeah. We, uh, we have a question uh, from Julie Robinson. Uh, she's got her hand up and also uh, Jen McIntosh has uh, uh, maybe after that has a question in the chat. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm Julie Robinson with Pima County and Jim, this is um, really helpful to get this nice overview of the direction um, air is uh, the form it's taking. Um, as a practitioner, my question is, how do you advise me to engage with AIR, um, a, in particular on um, real sort of ground level opportunities to engage students in sustainability work at Pima County in the community? Is that, will that be part of the plan or is, um, is there some other way that I should focus my efforts through kind of outreach with the UVA? Yeah, super. So it was well worth the five bucks for that softball, Julie. Thank you. Um, the University Climate Change Coalition has built, uh, and our effort as uh, in this 22 or uh, university sort of uh, construct, what we're doing um, is um, we set up a, an internship and fellowship program um, it's just getting started. We have uh, Neha Gupta is running that for Kathy, Kathy Jacobs, whom you know. Um, a, and that is uh, specifically uh, designed to provide opportunities for students um, to participate in uh, real life sort of activities, discussions, products within the, uh, our local community. So. We've defined for uh, the what we call the UC3 um, for the for this effort. We've defined a, our area as Pima County and uh, and the city of Tucson. So, um, Julie, I, um, a, it troubles me if 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 it's if we haven't reached out to you on that because. Uh, you you have it. I've have it. I've had a um, introductory conversation with Neha. So yes, you you guys are on that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm but I'm also thinking you know on kind of um, a bigger you know on a bigger level even starting to look at ways we can integrate the expertise. And I I didn't frame this in my original question, but um, start to integrate some of the expertise at the the institute to help inform our help us develop our work at Pima County if there if there's sort of a framework for that level of engagement as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we can, we can talk offline, Julie. Um, all of your ideas, um, you know this, uh, you and I have talked a lot, are always welcome. And uh, one of the things that I want to make sure that we are doing is that um, because um, we're dedicated to filling knowledge gaps and creating future leaders through our, our education and knowledge gaps through our research, we want to make sure and because we're solutions oriented, we want to make sure that we are uh, meeting a demand, and uh, that would be coming from you, Julie. Um, so, yeah. uh, we're, we're uh, all. And the other thing I should share is that even in this sort of difficult financial time, I found um, a lot of receptivity uh, all the way across, um, up, you know, up the sort of food chain in the university, uh, mm -hmm. or anything that has benefit students. And uh, right. um, so, for, uh, you know, Kirsten Engel and I have, uh, and some others have just been talking about what might be some opportunities for uh, us to help uh, at the state capitol. And, and mm. uh, we, have, we have one Kirsten, uh, and until we can get 10 of them, maybe we can actually <laughs> multiply her by having some support at our end. So, um, if, if, so anyway, yeah, Julie, I'd love to talk with you more about that. And thank you for, for asking it. Yeah, great. And, and, and thank you because you have presented, you and Kathy and Greg Garfin have presented to the UBE and have been very accessible. So thank you and looking forward to doing more of that. Great. Uh, so Jen has a question here about catalyzing new interdisciplinary research. Um, Jen, would you like to ask your question to the group? Sure. Hi, Jim. It was interesting to see kind of the new direction of AIR. So kind of following up on Joellen's comment, um, one of the things that seems to be missing, um, at least since I've been at U of A the last 14 years, is a place that could help to catalyze, you know, proposals around the theme of resilience by faculty members that aren't part of institutes that, and I understand that, as you said, your, your bubble math didn't include everybody, but imagine some of the big efforts like the critical zone observatories, um, that was successful, a place that faculty could go and get research support, both in terms of proposal development and execution. Is that something that is in the conversations about AIR? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. I absolutely, and, and where we struggle a little bit is that right now we're really lean, uh, a, but we would love to do that. And that's a, um, a, what I meant in, uh, uh, there was one, my last slide. Um, the one with the little fuzzy animals, um, a convening, uh, funding, team building. So um, a, in a, a more mature form, we'd, we would have a, a lot more capacity than we have right now. But the principle is absolutely yes and, and, and there. And what, I've, uh, what we've done, because we've just had a number of you know, fairly large integrated proposals that we've been a part of, uh, we've reached out to Kim Patton in, uh, a, in what, uh, RII. Uh, she's a part of the uh, research development. So, uh, and her uh, team to be, um, to help with that. So ultimately, um, a, we would love to at least be the place where the conversations can happen, even if we rely on RII uh, for some specifics of pulling together. I've, you know, um, a, I've been part of, I've been on both sides of these, these large integrated research uh, proposals uh, a, before, uh, a, before ASU, I spent 20 years in the federal government at NOAA running climate programs. And, and so I understand the challenge, um, especially from this end, because a, there's, um, it's really hard to pull all this stuff together and that really, really time consuming. Um, and so love to be able to help with that at the moment. We're just not there. We, if you, uh, if, if, if you saw sort of our, our roster, you'd, you'd see what I meant. But the uh, principle I, is absolutely there, Jen. Yes. Okay. I think Dick Baker had his hand up next. Yes, um, I come at this uh, as a co-conspirator with Malcolm back from the 1980s. And uh, I work both in the applied area and the basic science area. I think uh, AIR seems to me to be largely about solutions. 
capacity to recover quickly, to spring back from something known that is happening. I think the big problems of the future are unknowns. The infamous Rumsfeld talked about known knowns, unknown knowns, etc. And one of the difficulties that we may face in the future are problems unanticipated for which we attempt solutions for things that we think we know. The Iraq war is a great example going back to Rumsfeld. It was a solution to the wrong problem. I don't think air can function properly unless there is the basic understanding of the potential unknowns that are going to be far worse to deal with than the things that we anticipate. And that is a profound argument for having the basic science side that Joe Ellen and uh, Jen and Malcolm talked about. I don't think it can be a success without that. So I'll state that very strongly. I didn't know if there was a question in there, but uh, thank you. I guess my question relates to how can we achieve that balance? Uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you, air isn't supposed to be doing everything. And I totally get the, uh, I've been working on climate since 1984, so I get it. Um, uh, and um, the, uh, it isn't supposed to be doing everything. So I uh, certainly um, would be very, very supportive. And in fact, you're exactly right. We can, we're not gonna be able to anticipate the things that we don't know about. And we are not trying to fill every gap by, uh, through air. Um, I uh, would be happy to be party, um, to, to, to be amongst the party that makes the argument that we uh, need to strengthen the physical sciences um, at the university. Um, it, it, it's, it's not what we do uh, in air. That's not my job today, but I'm happy to, to join you and Malcolm and Joella and others if we, uh, uh, you know, make a m march on the admin building. Sounds good. Malcolm, your hand's still up. I don't know if it's because you, 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 you have another question or, oh, okay. Uh, so, Jim, um, you know, it seems like air, air is at least a very important effort, it seems, to, to strengthen what had been a, a very decentralized uh, landscape with respect to uh, many of the areas that the university was involved in. Uh, my question is, how can we help? What, what, uh, what are you looking for in terms of uh, folks at the university who might, you know, be able to you know, promote things or, or, you know, interest students in what you're doing? What, what is the message you'd like us to, to get out? Right. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Um, you already have. I mean, this last uh, 18 minutes has been super helpful. Um, I've uh, been taking notes um, in case you hadn't noticed. Um, I would love to hear more uh, from folks. I'd like to hear your input um, as we go. Um, I, um, uh, I am uh, maximally uh, transparent um, in all of this. Um, we, you know, we need you to get this th right. We need to be asking the right questions. We need to be filling the right gaps. Um, uh, remember that I'm, uh, a, uh, I'm, I'm just keeping the seat warm uh, for now. Um, and uh, a, the, uh, in fact, I've already been asked to, my, my term was to end at uh, the end of September, uh, but because of circumstances, I've been asked to stay on a little bit longer. And uh, I'm not saying this th that for any reason other than uh, this is in fact very temporary. And that's why to me, it's uh, uh, what I'm seeing my job right now and all of our jobs right now is to create the right kind of foundational basis in the culture, the culture and the, uh, the tradition of really being in service to the university. Um, I had mentioned, uh, so for example, uh, setting up the, the, the Regional Climate Modeling Center or the, our work in the built environment. I, I should have mentioned that we reached out 
to Barbara uh, Bryson, who's in Kapla, and she has a program called Restruct. Well, AIR has one of its themes is the is resilient built environment. Um, we're gonna like start over, recreate it, come up with something uh, that is somehow competing because she's got a really good program there that uh, needed um, a, uh, a sort of financial institutional home. And so we're supporting that. Restru our AIR's uh, built environment is Restruct. In the regional climate modeling, we reach out to Chris and say, you know, we have a, a little bit of strategic investment funds. It's yours to be, build and create. Um, it, it, um, I don't uh, know. I'm going to look over to Tony because Tony Masaro and I work really uh, quite closely together. And it, you might help me answer that question because um, it, the... Uh, uh, the Howery program has been is just a, a really delightful part of what AIR is, and it gives us such pride to be able to say we're, we're, we're associated with Howery and that Howery is working particularly in, uh, in Native nations. And so if there are other programs or other activities or efforts or ideas, uh, bring them on. Um, we're, we're really, I think, Tony, you, could have, you can attest to that. For us, it's been optimal. Uh, for, first, because Jim's so collaborative, but also you get a panoptic. Um, I'm really grateful that we can be in that space. Hari simply stated is a funder, so we've got money, um, but we are substantively tied to water resilience for uh, Indian country, but especially native, uh, the Navajo Nation, where we think that what we can do there might be a model for arid lands and disparate impact elsewhere. Um, but we fund projects um, and that they're inherently interdisciplinary um, and we want um, I would think an answer to Kirsten's point is getting the word out across campus about who's here what they're doing so that we can see these collaborations is important here's a concrete example because we've been working since April with the water access coordination group on the nation um, meeting every week um, we've been able to move them toward uh, they creating a research portal if any of you have water related projects that would would be um, something that could assist the nation in meeting its own goals. Um, this coordination tool is going to be available to you. Just let us know that wouldn't have happened a year ago and it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't known Jim and been part of this conversation. Uh, bringing the campus closer together. It's going to have resource efficiencies. Um, You'll, and that's the other thing. Um, we're like a lot of funders. Uh, they're going to want whole solutions. And if U of A can offer them up uh, for some, especially for some shovel ready projects, um, I think it's going to be succeed, help us succeed in getting money from other funders too. Great. Yeah, thank you. Taking notes. Um, Do we have any uh, other questions for fo from folks? Let's see. Do we have any um, members of any of the air? Oh, here, Robert Glennon. Yeah. Jim, yeah. what do you have? Take us through the next six months. What's going to happen? Specific things you have in mind that you hope to accomplish? Mm -hmm. How is that going to work with the? search for a permanent director if that search can you can you tell us has that begun when will it begin so two things what are you going to do in the next six months and how does that relate to the search for the uh, for the permanent right. director? yeah great question so um uh, one thing for sure is that yeah, um uh, we we don't want to have things so uh, shiny and nice bow wrapped around something uh, that we say, hey, can, can you come run this thing? It's, we, we, we finished the design. Um, and so um, it's, um, <clears throat> it's really important that, uh, like I said a bit ago, that we lay out the foundation, the, the, the details to be um, determined, and um, that it, is, it just looks like a really cool job. Um, a, the reason why it's been slowed down is because the, the, the university is committed to investing a, a significant amount of dollars. I mean, when Betsy asked me to, 
extend uh, beyond September. I asked her why, and she said, well, because we just can't afford to, to, to do this search right now. I said, oh, I get it. Uh, I'm cheap and I'm here. And she said, yes. Um, and so um, what, uh, what we've done uh, and is uh, laid out an implementation plan in various sort of streams. And this again is in response to what, what Betsy asked us to implement given the circumstances. And, and uh, we have uh, teams and leaders and teams for each one of the, the components. Uh, this part, some of them are funded by the strategic investment uh, uh, funds. And so, like I mentioned before, not all of that is happening inside of air. In fact, most of it's happening outside of air. So we've involved uh, those folks. And the implementation then really is getting, you know, setting the stage, getting the groundwork, and looking for funds to be able to get, uh, get started. Um, and uh, that, the answer would have to be a little bit longer if I go into some of those details, but we are uh, implementing and then reporting uh, back to Betsy regularly. Um, the, 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 uh, the search has not started. Um, it, it will be a global search, but we will look really hard uh, right here. Um, we think that that person is very likely amongst us, um, but uh, we're not going to limit ourselves to being right, uh, be right here. So, um, yeah, certainly, um, if, if that's another way you can help, if anyone knows of anyone <laughs> that might be interested in this uh, this job, uh, I'm uh, very uh, happy to 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 uh, talk to them to to you know sort of uh, hand over the helm. Uh, it's been really fun. I mean, you can imagine working with people like Tony and Kathy and others. Um, it, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, it, and as uh, like Malcolm, he said he's emeritus. I, someday I, I want to get there too. Uh, any final questions for Jim before we wrap it up? I, can I just add one thing? I see Mark here, uh, Verkhoustra, and um, a, a, I don't know if he's active in these. Um, I, if you all don't know Mark, you gotta um, a, at some point. Um, he is, and you know, he's, he's, he's someone I recently met. We have a really cool project underway where there is a, um, uh, a material, uh, a cystic acid metal oxide material that was uh, created for the Navy SEALs 10 years ago. And we were approached by the, the scientist who has the, um, uh, who had, you know, proprietary um, a material. Uh, he lives in he's he lives in Wales, uh, and he's approached us about uh, putting this material. It's a super hydrophilic, and putting it in masks and in uh, uh, HVAC filters. Why? Because it traps the coronavirus. That's been tested, and it does it. Uh, and it's been tested in Wales. It's been tested in Italy, uh, and Mark is testing it here. Um, as soon as we get the and we're going to put the HVAC filters in our uh, bat. What is that? Uh, the anyway, the, the COVID dorms um, and uh, air handlers. And we've had a just a really cool project. That was the the adaptive pandemic responses last bullet there. So anyway, uh, uh, Mark's been great. Um, uh, we've had a, quite a number of conversations, and it's just another way that that U of A uh, is 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 a really a global leader in solutions to this this whole pandemic thing. Well, Mark, welcome. Uh, we look forward to getting to know you better. Uh, thanks to everyone for for coming today, uh, and to Jim especially for being willing to share with us what's been going on. Uh, any of you on this call who are not already on the list serve, please, and you would like to be on the list serve, please send me an email, real simple, glennon at arizona.edu, and we'll get you on the list serve. We have uh, typically six or seven meetings a year. This was an extra special one. Uh, it was uh, well attended. Uh, I think there were 38 at one, peep, one point uh, this, this afternoon, so or this morning to you. I'm, in, I'm on the East Coast. Um, uh, and it's an exciting time for the U and for the environmental and natural resources at the university. So thank you all for participating. And thank you, safe. everyone. Be safe. Thank you.
Okay, and our next regularly scheduled one is November 6th. So hope to see you then.